welcome back we will now move to our second module and in this module we will start discussing about different polymerization processes and in the first module we will talk about step growth polymerization and the polymers which are synthesized by step growth polymerization are sometimes also called step growth polymerization polymers or just simply step polymers. So, in this case we will give you few example of step growth polymers by various reaction and then go on to do theoretical treatment about linear step polymerization we will discuss about other things as well as we will discuss that when we go to that particular topic. Let us discuss step growth polymerization or step growth polymers the polymers which are synthesized using step growth polymerization are also called step growth polymers and sometimes they are just called step polymerization or step polymers. Just to give you briefly a historical perspective uh, the step polymers were first synthesized by Carothers and his group at DuPont during 1920s and 1930s and initial work of Carothers was limited to aliphatic polyesters which did not process high melting point and other uh, properties uh, which required for commercial applications. They also did uh, synthesize aromatic polyesters of isothalic acid and ethylene uh, glycol, but that also did not have required uh, properties for commercial application. Hence, they moved DuPont and Carothers uh, team at DuPont actually moved to synthesize polyamides uh, which actually uh, had a high melting point and robust mechanical properties uh, uh, for application and the first uh, uh, useful uh, synthetic um, polyamide was uh, nylon 66 which actually begin the polymer age uh, uh, in that time. Later work by Winfield and Dixon when they use instead of isothalic acid they use terephthalic acid and as a diacid moiety they could actually synthesize uh, poly, uh, PET polyethylene terephthalate polyester which become commercially viable. Which of the reactions are typically used for step growth polymers? The organic reactions which uh, need to proceed uh, almost like quantitative fashion actually 99 percent plus uh, conversion yield uh, has to be there in organic reaction to produce high molecular uh, linear polymers and and most polymers step polymerization involve reactions which uh, actually produce link that content heteroatom like oxygen and that is the reason these polymers which are synthesized by step growth polymerization are grouped as general class that we discussed during nomenclature like polyester, polycarbonate, polyamides and so on. There are many step polymers which has this carbonyl group. Now carbonyl group because of the delta positive charge in carbon they are prone to nucleophilic attack and which are very much useful for synthesizing commercially important families of polymer materials like polyesters, polyamide, polyimides, polyurethane, polycarbonates and so on. And some nucleophilic and electrophilic substitution reactions like poly also used for synthesis of step polymers like polyarylene ethers, aromatic polyketones, polyarylates, polyphenol sulfides, polysulfones, polysiloxanes, etc. Some example of uh, polymers and step polymers and step um, growth uh, polymer processes uh, general class. So, this is example of polyester we, which we take a dye acid and dye alcohol and this is the ester group in the polymer. Similarly, we can make polyester using dye ha acid halides uh, reacting with um, dye alcohol. Similarly, polyamides can be synthesized using diacids and diamines or diacid halides and diamines. In this case, the polymer actually contain amide bonds in the backbone or it can be 
uh, synthesized by a monomer having uh, you know amino acid type monomer where one side we have amino group and other side we have acid group they can self condense with each other and make a uh, mm, uh, poly condensation product or step growth polymers polyamides we can also use uh, poly this uh, this step growth polymerization for making uh, uh, high engineering or high performance polymer like uh, one shown here polycarbonate synthesizing of bisphenol a with uh, phosgene or for example we can also synthesize polyether sulfone some organic coupling reaction can be also used to synthesize this trans poly 1 for phenylene vinylenes some of the example are shown here like wittig coupling heck coupling macmurray coupling and these are standard organic reactions which are utilized in this polymerization process to make polymer products this is advantage in case of polymer scientist they or polymer chemist they can use use the uh, nice uh, organic reactions and then can utilize to make uh, new polymer molecules. Other examples like uh, polysiloxanes which contain silicon oxygen silicon bonds in the backbone and we further example like polyurethane and polyureas, polyurethanes are synthesized by uh, isocyanate reacting isocyanate with uh, alcohol groups uh, like diisocyanate and dialcohol. Some of the diisocyanates example are shown here and some of the dialcohols are shown here. So, they react each other to forming uh, urethane linkage, uh, this is the urethane linkage in the polymer. So, they make uh, synthesize polyurethanes. Polyureas can be synthesized by reacting these diisocyanates with diamines forming urea linkage in the backbone. Now, let us move about uh, theoretical treatment of linear step polymerization. The, before that we need to define what is functionality of monomers which is typically expressed as F. The functionality on monomers or F is defined as number of covalent bonds that a monomer or molecule or monomer unit in a macromolecule can form. So, it is basically let us give you example. So, it is a terephthalic acid now it can form two bonds this one this side and one this side. Say for example, reacting with the alcohol group or amine group. So, the functionality is two because it can form two covalent bonds two sides. Similarly, this dye alcohol can react with two sides and form two covalent bonds. So, this functionality is also two. Glycerol there are three hydroxy groups. So, which can react with three acid group. So, form three covalent bonds. So, F is three and this example pentaryl where we have four hydroxy groups. So, it can actually make four bonds with say four acid groups. So, we, in this case F is four. Few things about functionality of monomers. There is no monofunctional monomers because if a monomer is only capable of making one covalent bond obviously, it can it cannot participate in polymerization reaction. So, there is no monofunctional monomers uh, which are useful in um, making polymers. If F is 2 all the monomers during a polymerization reaction is if F is 2 then we get a linear chain macromolecule or it in some cases we can get a macro cycle by reacting with two ends of a long polymer chain. And if F is greater than 2 that means, we have um, at least 3 or 4 or even more uh, uh, um, like uh, functional groups in a, in a monomer then it can lead, lead to branching of in macromolecule and in some cases uh, we can it can go up to forming network and gel. Now, we sometimes deliberately or not deliberately as impurity this monofunctional compounds may pre present in the in the polymer polymerization medium in that case when they react they actually end the chain. 
so no further reaction possible in that particular chain. So, we call this as chain stopper. So, these are not monomers, but sometimes they are used deliberately to control the molecularoid, but sometimes if they are present unwantedly as impurity, then the polymerization uh, be can become um, um, more less useful because of presence of this chain stopper. Just to uh, conclude or, or just summarize or um, complete the story about functionality, if we have a monomer like uh, styrene, then it can actually form two bonds both sides. So, F is 2 and if you have a divinyl benzene, then it can actually form four bonds to this side to this side. So, F is 4. Now, in case of linear, we will now move to and restrict to first discussion on linear step polymerization, which means we are talking about the polymerization process where F is 2 for the monomers. Now, F as 2 or functionality 2 can be can be obtained by a single monomer where a monomer like hydroxy carboxylic acid where we have 2 monom, two functional groups in a particular monomer and it can form uh, a polymer through self condensation. So, we call this as a B type monomer or we can have two monomers A A type and B B type, where we have a particular monomer having two same functional groups and the other monomer having two different functional groups, which they which the, the functional groups can react with each other. Now, if we have this A B type monomer, then the ratio of the functional groups is always 1, because each functional group has one of each monomer molecule has one of A functional groups and other has the B functional group. So, their ratio will be always 1 is to 1, but in this particular case A and B B type case, if we have same number of monomers or same molar ratio of these two monomers, then we have the ratio of the functional groups as 1 is to 1. Now, if you if we have we can also alter the molar ratio of the functional groups by altering the molar ratio of monomer in this, this particular case, which is not possible in this particular case, where the molar ratio of the functional group is always 1 is to 1. The importance of molar ratio of the functional groups will be discussed in a, in a minute when we discuss the molecular weight, uh, how to calculate the molecular weight from um, the poly linear step polymerization. And we also define one um, term conversion, which we discussed earlier that conversion is in case of linear uh, in the step polymerization is the fraction of functional groups reacted. So, if you have 100 functional groups and 90 of them is, are reacted, then we functional conversion is actually 90 by 100 or it is uh, 0.9 or 90 percent. Now, let us give a example pictorially. So, if I have um, say A B type monomers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 monomers. So, which have 12 functional groups and at the beginning there is no reaction happens. So, the number of monomers reacted or number of functional groups reacted is 0 by the total functional groups, which is so, so conversion is 0 and number of molecules present at this moment n is uh, 6 and degree of polymerization in this case is 1, because there is only one structural unit in each molecule. If these two interact or couple with each other, then we now have 5 molecules 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 molecules and 2 of the functional groups are now reacted. So, P is 2 by 12, which leads to this number. So, my total number of presence is 5 and degree of polymerization which is the average degree of polymerization is in this case degree of polymerization is 2. So, 2 into 1 such molecule plus 1 into 4 such molecules and this is the total number of molecules. So, which gives 1.2 or total number of initial molecule divided by total number of present molecule, 
number of present molecule given by n and n0 is the number of molecules present at the beginning of the reaction. When we these two also react, now we get 4 molecules. So, number of functional groups reacted is 4, 4 divided by 12 is so p is 4 divided by 12 0.33 and we get degree of polymerization. Total number of molecules present initially divided by total number of molecules present now which is 6 by 4 which is 1.5. Similarly, if you, we can do go and doing this when all the molecules reacted, we have 10 functional groups reacted. So, the fraction conversion is uh, 0.83 and degree of polymerization is 6 because 6 molecule has joined in this case to make a polymer. Or, or to, to make a molecule. We move to a little larger number. So, if you have say 100 of these molecules, so at the beginning we have P 0 by, so 100 molecules mean we have 200 functional groups. So, 0 by 200 degree of polymerization is 1. Now, if just hypothetically we think that each two of the such molecules reacted forming dimers, then now we have 50 molecules. 100 functional groups has reacted. So, conversion is 0 0.5 and degree of average degree of polymerization is 2. Similarly, now if we consider all these molecules have reacted, dimers has reacted to mean tetramer. Now, we have 25 such molecules, 150 functional groups have reacted. So, we get 0 0.75 as, as a conversion and degree of polymerization as 4. Similarly, if say out of 25, 12 molecules react with each other, I mean 25 molecules react with each other forming 12 molecules plus I have one remaining which will give us that 174 molecule functional groups has reacted out of 200 which means the conversion value is 0.87 and degree of polymerization is total initial molecule is 100. Now, we have 13 molecules. And so, degree of polymerization is 7.7. .7. Similarly, if you just proceed we get uh, when every molecule is reacted with each other, we get uh, conversion is basically 109, two, two unreacted functional groups is remaining. So, basically 191, 98 functional groups reacted. So, P is 0 0.99 and uh, the average, uh, the structure, number of structure in the mo this molecule is 100. So, degree of polymerization is 100. So, please note that degree of polymerization is given by N0 which is the number of molecules at the beginning divided by number of molecules N at the present time. And P is the fraction of molecules, fraction of functional groups which reacted. So, if we plot this, this is your um, degree of polymerization Xn. So, if I plot degree of um, Xn versus P conversion, then the graph will look like this as we have seen in the last also that unless we go to extremely high conversion, our molecular weight or degree of polymerization is not high. For example, in the last, exa uh, last example, if we go back and see that even when the conversion is 93 percent or 93 the degree of polymerization was 14.3. So, in this case to get a high degree of polymerization we must go to a very high conversion. In real case the sample will have um, all types of um, chain length. So, we will have this type of scenario. So, which means again that we will have a, uh, so basically to get a high molecular weight or high degree of polymerization, this is the molecular weight or degree of polymerization, this is conversion, we need to have a, a very high almost like quantitative conversion of functional groups. So, this is a very important point that to make high molecular weight polymers in a step growth polymerization we need to push the reaction to a high, very high value of conversion. 
Now, how to quantify this? Uh, what is the relationship between degree of polymerization and conversion? And first, we will take the simplest case where we take A B monomer, where the molar ratio of A group and B group is always 1 is to 1, or equimolar mixture of A and B B molecules, which will ensure that molar ratio of A functional group and B function group is given by B A is equals to 1. Now, in that case, we know that uh, x n or p is given by the number of fractional group reacted. So, n reacted divided by initial number of uh, molecules present. So, which means n 0 initial molecule and the present number of molecules. So, n is the number of molecules present now, which means n 0 minus n is the functional groups which has reacted. Each molecule will have two functional groups. So, basically two cancels out each other when we talk about conversion. So, we can write 1 minus n by n 0. So, we write uh, n by n 0 at 1 minus p. Now, what is uh, x n? We, we know x n is n 0 by n which means 1 over 1 minus p. So, this is the expression which we which we get for number average degrees of polymerization which is given by 1 over 1 by p. Remember this is applicable for A B type monomer or a equimolar mixture of A and B B. And once we know the degree of polymerization then we can also know M n from M average of two structural units plus m of n group and because sometimes n group is very low compared to the total molecular weight it can be ignored. We can give a example and quickly uh, solve uh, this to show the example. So, this is x n the average degree of polymerization is given by 1 by 1 minus p where p is the conversion and this is uh, uh, this is uh, called Carothers equation uh, developed by Carothers and the molecular weight m n is uh, divided by uh, given by m naught which is the average of the molecular weight of structural unit um, into the degree of polymerization plus the molecular weight of the n group. So, m naught 1 minus p plus m a, a, a molecular weight of the n group. Let us give you example. We we need to find out the m n value of the polymer formed by reaction of 1 is to 1 mole by mole of adipic acid and ethylene glycol. So, we need to find out m n. Now, m n we know x n by m average of the structural units plus m of the n groups. Now, the, the, the polymer is reaction of adipic acid and ethylene glycol. So, if I write the structure of the two monomer, this is adipic acid plus ethylene glycol. And the polymer structure would be The molecular weight of this uh, repeat unit is given by 172. So, m average which is the average of the structural unit would be given by 172 by 2 
86. So, what will be my molecular weight x n? x n is given by 1 over 1 minus p, p is 99 percent over 1 by 1 over 0.99. So, a n is 100. So, my m n would be m n would be given by 100 into 86 plus molecular weight of the n groups. n groups are basically OH and H. So, basically water 18. So, 8600 plus 18, 8618. Now, in most cases, this, this molecular weight of the n groups are ignored. Uh, so, we generally write uh, this is generally ignored in most cases. So, this is the example. Now, we we will go to the next uh, case where we have one of the molecules are present in excess. Now, as we have seen in the last example that we can control the polymerization to find to control the molecular weight. Like if we control the p, p value then we can control the molecular weight. But one problem is there uh, controlling the molecular weight by using just value of p that at the end we get the polymer having the functional group present in the polymer. Now, if you use that polymer in product or during further processing what happened this the free functional groups which are present at the chain end they can actually participate into further reaction and as a result we there will be a instability in the molecular uh, weight of the polymers. So, we should have a strategy where we can control the polymer molecular weight without having the functional groups present at the end of the polymers. And one such strategy is by controlling the stoichiometry of two monomers. For example, if I take in a polyamide formation, if we take excess amine, diamine, then we are likely to get amine groups at the end. And if we have only amine groups at the end, no free carboxylic group, then there is no further reaction possible between them and so the molecular weight will be uh, stabilized. Similarly, if we have a excess acid, then we are likely to get acid groups at the end without amine groups and so the polymer molecular weight would be stabilized. Now, I am not going to get a, derive this expression. Now, the simplest case that where we have A and B two types of monomers A and B functionality and where B B is excess in that case the average degree of polymerization is given by 1 plus R plus divided by 1 plus R. I am not going to derive this expression just writing this expression, this is not simple to derive. Uh, you can refer any textbook uh, uh, to find out this derivation. Degree of polymerization, average number average degree of polymerization is given by 1 plus r, 1 plus r minus 2 rp, where r is the ratio of the functional groups present in such a way that it is always less than 1. So, the, the monomer or the functional groups which is present in excess that will be in denominator. So, in this particular case R would be given by the number of functional groups of A divided by number of functional groups of B because we are talking about B in excess. So, R is always less than equals to 1 when they are in present in the same number then it is equals to 1 and when B is larger this is always it is less than less than 1. We will, uh, there is another way to, I had planned to uh, do this uh, uh, example and I, I do not know time permits or not, uh, but uh, I will move to next slide where I will give you another strategy by which uh, we can um, basically control the molecular weight which is by adding a chain stopper. 
for example, in the reaction between diamine and diacid, if we add a monofunctional acid, then we get the polymer chains with in ended with this monofunctional groups. And we actually can use same formula where redefining the value of R little bit like this where N A by N B plus 2 N B dash where N B dash is the number of molecules of the monofunctional groups which are added. And this is applicable for the simplest case where we have A B type of monomer or equivalent mixture of A B and B B plus we have a small amount of monofunctional reactant and which we number of which we are telling as N B dash. So, we use the same equation to finding out the average degree of polymerization, but because uh, here we modify the, the uh, R expression for R as N A divided by N B plus 2 N B dash N B dash N A equals to N B because we have taken an equivalent mixture of A and B B or we have taken A B type um, monomer and N B dash is the number of monomers for this uh, number of molecules of this monofunctional reactant. I will try to solve uh, a couple of numerical problems in the next class uh, to give a example of uh, uh, how this is uh, used for controlling the molecular weight. And I will continue for further uh, discussion on step growth polymerization in the next lecture.